I'm a little back. But I'm back. You are back. I'm not fully back. I still feel like I got a little tickle in my throat, but it ain't that COVID. I was going to say something. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you trying not to bet we would. I'm trying to be cool. Yeah, but yeah but I mean, yeah. but I, I still ain't. I mean, I'm not at 100%, but I'm I'm feeling pretty good. I don't feel strong in my right ear, Scott. You don't? <laughs> I'm only catching some of this left side. Like, it's mono. We're going to have to start that over like then. it's mono. But it's okay. No worries, man. I'm winning. No. I'm winning. No, you're, no, I'm good. That's way better. Yeah, yeah. way better. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's start it over. Okay. Don't start over. That was yeah. a good intro about oh. the tickle in your throat. No, I can't say <laughs> it. No, we're starting over. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I'm ready. I got it out. All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Woo! I forgot to hit the record button. You're going to blow your mic. You forgot to what? Hit the record button on that one. Okay, we're ready. Three, two. Bring it! Woo! See, you got Greg in there. He already. I like it. He already said, bring it! Bring it! (laughs) That's because the wolf's in the house, son. That's right. They don't know nothing about the wolf, but they're going to they they really they get to know the wolf today. Yeah. I don't both. know if they really want to know the wolf. Oh, they do. Because okay. cause this is the deal. Uh, welcome to another podcast. We got a special guest in the house. This is Thank you. the G-Dub Walker, but we refer to him as the wolf. Yes. You want to go back to all the way. How long we've been friends? Hold on. Let's, let's go back first. Before we, before we get into this long journey. Yes. A how long, lot of footsteps. How long, uh, let's see, go back. How old were you? <laughs> Ooh, it was 1991. <laughs> I long. think I was 18. Was I eight? I was 17 or 18. I was somewhere in there. Wow. So 1991. Yeah. And I was eight. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going there, young pup. That old young yeah, it was puppy. 1991. My state name is Gregory William Walker. We like to call him the but G-Dub. But my funk name yes. is The Wolf. Cause you know and I'm going to explain that here in a minute, how that came about. Because I, it's funny because people ask about, hey, dude, what's that mean? I mean, because it's kind of, I don't know if I can say that word could be politically incorrect, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. They say that's gay. Right. And I say, <laughs> you said well, you don't know the, the story. If you knew the story, you'd go, oh, I get it. Because people don't know it. So, okay, so. I've known, Justin and I have known each other since 1991. I was a teenager. I was 17, I think, 17 or 18. And uh, fast forward a little bit, I, I've been playing music. And what most people don't understand, they really don't understand. I don't even know if Scott understands this, well, we, we'll break it on down. Yeah, we'll break it on down. Here it is. This is, this is education. Back in the 80s, uh-huh. I became a Christian in 1988, somewhere in there. Okay. Right? So uh, I was a rock and roll kid. I yeah. grew up with music. I my Kiss. music in my family. Yeah, dude, my dad took me to see Kiss in 1981. So the I'm army wow. tour. Yeah, and I knew when I saw Kiss, I saw Gene Simmons blowing fire and blood. About, you said ah, I want. Ah. <laughs> I said, said I want some of that. Yeah, I was like, man, I want to be a musician. And most people my age that play music, they remember that they all to say the same thing. Oh right? yeah, especially guitar players. So because uh, it was a show. Yeah, dude, it was all. It was incredible, and I never seen Kiss. anything. Yeah, although if you're old, you're gonna remember this, but. Wendy O. Williams opened up for Okay. Board, and that shocked the crap out of me. I was too little for all that. I was like, man, what is that about? I understand. And so, uh, but my dad was cool enough to take me to see that. So anyway, I was a rock and roll kid. I picked up, music was in my family. I started playing the piano uh, in school. I was an orchestra nerd. I played strings and got beat up, you know, that kind of deal. But I have played guitar. I've been playing guitar since probably was about like, I was like 12. So if we go all See, the way to like... You getting educated, Scott. I did Scott. not know that. Mm-hmm. If you go to like 1991, okay, we're mm. jumping way up. In 1991, in the 80s, there was no Christian music. I mean, the only thing there was, honestly, if you're talking about me becoming a Christian and, you know, growing up on Hendrix and then, you know, uh, uh, Steppenwolf, that was my dad listened to. And he introduced me to... Definitely Hendrix, Steppenwolf, and then I kind of got in my own thing as a, a teenager's kiss and those bands. And when I became a Christian, there was this movement in the 80s about Satanism 
<laughs> and backward masking. You remember that? You'd be like, the devil's on the fire. Yeah, anybody old knows. Yeah, yeah. Young people won't have any idea what you're talking about. No, records. But who was the first one that played a record backwards anyway? Why would you even play a record? You know who it was? They started with the Beatles. That's what I was about to say. But why would you play the record backwards? I don't know. People were just trying to find stuff. It's like today, just trying to. Can you imagine we had the internet back then? Lord. I'm still tripping on. If you got a good yeah. Beatles record, don't play it back. Don't play it. You're gonna mess it up. That don't make no sense. Anyway, but go on. But anyway, so there was, yeah, was no music back. And if you remember, I mean, people were breaking records and burning books and burning oh, yeah. records. And so I, I, I kind of fit in that when I became a Christian. That you know that was kind of the thing. Except for, and I'm gonna back up a little bit, but I'm gonna say his name. This cat that was a mentor of mine. Uh, his name was uh, Mick Knight. And Mick. <laughs> That's a cool that name. That's a cool name. When hey, you go, dude, what's your name? Mick Knight. Mick Knight. No one's going to remember this, though. So, Mick. <laughs> Mick had hair down to his nipple line. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, dude, I'm telling you, bro. Scott, you people, all right? He I had to give me. you a length reference. Yeah, I, like I mean, it. people yeah. are listening. You know what I'm saying? They understand. So, you had know, to give them a visual. The road, so they need a visual. They need oh, It wasn't right on there. the collarbone. <laughs> it was on the nipple line. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Yeah. This is the wolf talking it's the right wolf, now, man. All right, look. So like you don't it. bring him into this den unless you want him to talk. That's exactly unless right. he's gonna do some howling. So yeah. Okay, go so ahead. Here on. I go. Go keep talking. So anyway, Mick, the guy comes to my front door and knocks on the door. Thanks for the, well, the reference. I mean, I wasn't sure what knocking on the door. So if they're driving, that sounded better. If yeah, they're driving, yeah. they know what yeah. that is. Now, thank you. Yeah. All right, yeah. go ahead. So yeah. I didn't know this, but my sister had become a Christian before that. Brandon. And so she had actually invited him over, and I had no idea. And my parents didn't know either. We didn't, I didn't go up in a Christian home. I mean, it just wasn't that way. And we were poor, so it was just, it is what it is. So this dude shows up. He's got long hair. Said, and when I opened yeah. the door, I was a short little lad, too. I didn't grow until I was, like, in college. I was know. a short lad. I was just, a short lad. All right, go ahead. So anyway, I show up. And uh, I go to the door, and this dude, and remember, I'm rock and roll, though, dude. I mean, you know, Winger's coming out. Oh. She's only 17. <laughs> yeah. 17. You know Ooh, what I'm saying? That That's all out. Nice. That was hair metal, you know? I went higher because he was already up there. I had to go, <laughs> I had to go, I had to go above it. So uh, he tells me about Jesus, and I had never heard this before, and this dude was a rock and roll dude. And so... When I became a Christian, though, I was told by the church or religion that I had to get rid of all my stuff. And I did. I really did. I got rid of all kind of great albums. albums. Great albums. You're still bitter a little. Oh, I am, dude. I understand. I am. So I still was playing guitar. And there was nothing to listen to. You know, you just, so I, you know, you're digging for stuff to listen to and, you know, but you're trying to live up to this standard and it's all just a bunch of crap. Yep. But anyway, fast forward. I was still playing guitar, and uh, I'd gotten in. A friend of mine had showed me like Striper. Like there, you again, you don't understand that back in that day, Striper was considered. Which most people don't know Striper is unless you're. Oh, it's Yellow age, Black but, Attack, like yeah. you bring representing today. Yeah, if you're on yellow YouTube, black. you can see that YouTube, Yellow Black you Attack. You see the Yellow Black like a honey bee. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway, yeah. When I met Justin, and I'm I'm trying to do this real fast. There was nobody playing around, man. There was no, I mean, there's there was no music. I mean, you had music in Shreveport, but it wasn't the same. And there was definitely no Christian music. No. In fact, when I played the guitar in church, uh, I remember one time. I'm not gonna name the church, but I was at the church, and I put a little distortion on it. Oh, and that's pa- of the devil. Oh son, he Lord, said. the pastor looked at it now. God bless him. He's gone, but he's with the Lord now. But he looked at me and said. The devil is the author of confusion. <laughs> and, and then he good, said, good. we don't do that in here. <laughs> Did he talk that deep? No. I'm like the devil? Oh. No, I'm making that up because that's how I, was, I was. got scared sitting here right now. <laughs> I got a little scared. Yeah, because yeah, you were the devil. That's yeah. true. I forgot. Yeah. Well, that's way on. We're going to get way, way on. Way on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. He, he so did. he said that distortion, yeah, he said distortion was, the was the devil. Yeah. So you I was like, like well, Lord. I you mean, said I well, can't plug that in here. Nope. Can't do that there. So there was a band named Open Eyes. Yeah. And back in the day, in all honesty, in all honesty, if you were from here, you remember the Christian group Open Eyes. He used to play putt putt. Most yeah. people didn't know what putt putt was, right? Oh yeah, that's what so, it was down there. Yeah. I East was there. East Texas 
uh, mid Louisiana, like Alexander, Natchitoches, Monroe, places, even in Arkansas. Man, they knew Open Eyes. Open Eyes was a Christian group. That's what they were. And man, I wanted to be a guitar player. That's what I want. I want to be a rock star guitar player. But now I wanted to be, and I, I didn't want to play bars and stuff. I wanted to play, you yeah. know, Christian music, you know. Because we rock were trying. And roll. We yeah. was out there doing it. We had a, we had some gigs. But, yeah, but, dude. And so you were a little bit younger because. Yeah, I, I was. I was like 17 or 18. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. Or how, how old are you now? I'm 47 now. Yeah, so I'm yeah. 50. So, yeah, so you're so talking you're three or four years yeah, old. Yeah, you were three or four years old. And this is before Nashville. This is before all oh, that yeah. stuff. And I just thought, man, these guys are great. Uh, they got, I mean, they're cool to me, they were hip. We got some saying? video of when we were playing at one point, and we got Greg in the audience like, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Because I was a straight groupie. Because, yeah. again, remember, I'm trying He's to get in. I want to meet people. You got to meet people, you know. We're not in Nashville. We're not anywhere. I'm just trying to get somewhere. And everybody followed open up. They did, man. You show up. Something to back. do, man. Yeah. yeah dude, I remember y'all played Summer Grove when I was a wee lad. <laughs> you was just a wee lad. Yeah. That was and That's funny you said Summer ago. Grove. So yeah. here we go. So I'd already met Alan through Ron Pettit. Ron Pettit was a drummer mm-hmm. for y'all. And Ron and I had gotten close. But I knew kind of Alan. Alan always kind of scared me. you know, Because <laughs> he's the bear. He's the bear. I didn't realize, you know, back mm-hmm. then. I mean, I know. We I, all I, got I, nicknames. It's the wolf. Yeah, it's the, the bear, bear. The uh, hawk. The hawk. We got a, We can't say the first oh, part, but it Simba. is the hawk. And, and it's Simba. Simba. Yeah, no doubt. That's Daniel. That's Daniel Simba. He just like a little old sweet little cub. Oh. A.K.A. Crookfoot. We got a few for that, dude. <laughs> yeah. Peepaw, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it is definitely Peepaw. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so you're a summer So girl. look, so Alan wants me to meet Justin. All right, so Alan and I kind of click. We're guitar players, you know, and he's like, look, man, would you like to do sound for us? And I was like, sure, because at the time, uh, you work for Shreveport Music, you work for Pro Sound Music, that's kind of what you do on the side, and you play music on the side. So anyway, uh, I meet Justin, like, we go to Summer Grove, no doubt, and Justin has this long hair. Now we reference it as a mullet, but you got to understand back in the be- mm. day, it wasn't a mullet. No, I mean, that's it just was long hair. hair, that's the way it was. So I'm sitting down beside Alan. <laughs> this is the truth. This is a true the story. The origin story of the, the wolf. wolf. All right, so... I'm sitting beside Alan. I'm a, the we're on a pew. Yeah, we're in a pew, and there's a. I'm on the aisle seat, and Alan's sitting right to my right, and mm-hmm. then right on the side, right side of Alan is Justin, and Alan sits down, and you know it's just like nonchalant. Say, man, he didn't say say. That's just what I'm saying because we didn't say say back then. Hey, I'm just you know paraphrasing. Say, hey, this is Greg, and so he's like, and Justin, you gotta understand. Justin was cool, but I mean, he's still cool, but he was like way cool back then. You know what I'm saying? And so he was like, <laughs> he's just, he's just like, hey, man, good to meet you. And he was cool about it. But then he looked at Alan, no doubt, and he goes, say, man. He didn't say, say, man. I'm just saying that. <laughs> he's he adding goes, in. I'm adding in. He goes, say, man, that dude looks straight like Teen Wolf. <laughs> That's where it started. And you got to understand, I had a mullet. I didn't know really what to do with my hair. He you looked know? like Teen Wolf. And I had, I don't have them anymore, but I had these fang looking <laughs> he had, teeth. Oh, yeah. he had some fang teeth. Oh, yeah. I had oh, some yeah. fang teeth. Yeah, they're gone now. I never got them fixed. They just got pulled out, but <laughs> the, the, the fangs were there. And hey, Dude, I'm telling you. And so, thus, that, the thus, name got reduced because he wasn't a teen anymore. He just moved to Well, what they the started wolf. calling me, though, in all honesty, because I start, I start going with my dude sound with them. You know, meet people, shake people's hands, whatever. Because I want to play a guitar. But Alan was a guitar player, you know. And Alan wasn't going to have no two guitar players up in the <laughs> the band. That just wasn't going to happen. I mean, egos were just too big, you know. But ironically, and, eventually it did. But in early days, yeah, early that days, wasn't no, it just wasn't going to happen. It just wouldn't do that either. Let's just be straight. It was, it was Alan. It was Alan and Justin's band. That's just the way it was. And so, uh, when I got older, like when I turned twenty, they'd be like teen. They still called me teen. I was like. <laughs> I'm not a teen, bro. You might as well go the wolf. And they were like, okay. And then that's what's that. That is. That's wolf. it. That's how I went down. It was the wolf. It ain't, so, there's nothing so, cool about that. All right. So he was a good, good guitar player because you actually created another man called him. Well, you and yeah, yeah. Daniel. And yeah. I, all access. I've known Daniel since he was like 15. Like, and so, I, in all honesty, musician wise, yeah. Daniel was really good at 15 years yeah, old. Yeah, he was. Yeah. And it was a sorry kid he played. So Daniel went to South with me. Greg went to Huntington. Yeah, we were gonna get. I was gonna get to that. But, but yeah, we yeah. all kind of 
when whenever they were playing, they had a, a heavy metal. Yeah, band. we was metal straight out. I, I still love metal. I mean, it's just yeah, and it wasn't yeah, bad. I mean, yeah. I thought. I mean, well, I mean, it's Garage Band, Metal, Shreveport. I mean, you know. yeah, but it was still yeah. good. So yeah. Grant could play. He they did what they did. Yeah, but I remember having an early conversation. Not a lot of people wanted metal. Mm-mm. So like, if you're gonna do it, you got to try to hit where the majority of people are wanting. That's right. So I remember they're playing and we're playing and you know yeah. we we're gigging more than they are because we've been more. around long. They're yeah. not getting. So <laughs> whenever we got to first Bozier, now this we were skipping a lot we're skipping to get a lot here, of stuff to get there. To yeah. there, but I was telling them I was like, look, man, if you want a gig, you're gonna have to pick that bass up because if you can play the bass and Daniel can play the drums, we we're gonna be able to go to another level. Yeah, because the truth is, man, is that actually, if I'm not, and I may be thinking about it wrong, I think that. You, they talked to Daniel first. He may have been, and it wasn't me cause because because at the time I was at ETBU, right? And you I, and yeah, and Daniel. Yeah, me and Daniel was there too, and right. so Daniel would. We got together in my dorm room, and he was like, "Man, I really think I'm I'm going to start playing with him." I said, "Man, I don't know, man, because I like playing the guitar, you know." And they don't need two guitar players; they need a bass player. And Daniel, and was the like, only reason we needed a guitar and a bass player, we had moved to Nashville and moved back. So after Nashville. We were kind of reinventing Open Eyes, and it was just me and Alan, and it wasn't right, the right. other guys. That's right. So then it was like, here's the chance to start and put together something, a, new. A, a something yeah. new and fresh. And fresh. And so guess what? In 1992. And Justin did say that. Now, you did say, you're like, look, man, you got to think about it. But, you know, you got to, it's for everybody. You got to think about everything. You know. So then we were able direction. to play more shows. You were able to do bigger. So we were playing. And, and what so, people don't know is, Grace, is that mm. I had – all I had was guitar gear, right? I had nothing, and Justin was nice enough to let me use his bass and his bass amp, in which I put, honestly, after we got going, and we, dude, you don't understand, guys don't understand, man, we were playing all the time, we really were, and he let me put a foghorn leghorn on there, and say boy, with the... You know those little windows, the little bubbles where it talks, and it's on there. I still wish I had it. Dude. I know. I do, I too. Do too. I, and it said, say, boy, give me some of that nasty rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> I still wish I had that, dude. And that was Bobby. I would still put stank on it. <laughs> and Bobby painted it, didn't he? Yeah, dude. Bobby Stevenson. Bobby Stevenson. Yeah. yeah, he did. But so, you did that for me. You oh, gave that to me. Oh, I'd have gave it to you. Because, man, that's what we needed. We needed that next disdain. But what other people don't know, and I told Wendell this. Wendell was talking to me the other day because we were playing something. He saw me playing bass. And I said, and I'll tell everybody else this, too, was that I, I really didn't know how to play bass. I know how to play a stringed instrument when you're talking about the guitar or the mandolin. or right. the, But, man, there's a, there's a rhythm to it. There's a sync to it. There's a way to do it, right? And... Man, I had to go hang out with gospel players, right? But because I, I didn't have that rhythm, I just didn't. I didn't have any of that. So I learned that from gospel guys in the country. I mean, honestly, I don't even remember their names. I just know that they come into pro sound music. I, you know, uh, Sean Stroop helped me a little bit. But I'm telling you right now, gospel players were the ones that said, "This is what you got to dive into. This is what you need to do." And I just, I stuck to it. Because I was already a rock and roll dude, it's easy for me to play eighth notes. Anybody can do that. But you got to be able to have that rhythm. You got to be able to feel that. You can't. Yeah. You can't teach. I, you you can't teach feel. You just can't, man. You just got to be in your bones. So I just dove right into it. And that's why I like him as a bass player and guitar player. He can play, and I like it. But I grew up with him playing bass. Right. So when he puts that bass on, I put a smile on. <laughs> I, I just like the way you said feel yeah but it's the you, truth it's the truth man because like, i can look at him here in this i can hear different bass rhythms in my head and get a smile laughing because you put daniel and greg together for me it's comfortable yeah dude i mean it's just that's it's thick that's the way it is now and don't With get me two wrong C's. there are guys who are <laughs> t-h-i-double c yeah, that's right yeah. that's two th- c's so that's what that's how I had to approach it, and I still do that now. I still look, you know, I I try to. But now you, you want now, it to be feel, man. You want it to feel that and be. That so then now, man. the irony of all ironies. Yes. So now you're leading the band and helping you and Daniel yeah, putting yeah, all that. Yeah. And he can play whatever, depending on who's yeah, going to do whatever, because he has the ability to do, it, which is cool to me. So that's to me. And I could also hold keys on a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you what. Keys hold on. But let me I know t- chords. But, but let me tell you what he can't do. Tell me about it. He can't sing. Oh, <laughs> no. Don't fight it. 
Don't fight it. That's about as good as I can. Hey, do. We, oh. well, it's been a long run, and we've been, hey, man, uh, bring Greg down in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I remember being in the studio down in Florida, and I was trying to throw my part in. And Ronnie Ron Kate. Case, he's, you know, he, he popped in through the headphones and said, Hey, Greg, won't you come in the booth with me? <laughs> <laughs> I was heartbroken, too, because I still I was insecure, so I wasn't I wasn't secure in the fact that I right. couldn't sing. I just wanted to be a He's part a good of it. screamer, though. So, yeah, like, if I we scream, scream or we get loud yeah, on it. That's it. But he can make it, and he's a great songwriter. Or 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 I could make silly noises, like uh, that one song from Audio Adrenaline. Yeah. It only takes a little spark. See, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> see this is why see, you get in the podcast I, I, wow yeah. yeah i can do that but, but i can't do anything else. that's the, the but like probably which this isn't really what we were we're talking about a lot of stuff so the, this is giving you the backstage yeah just with a little bit of backstage. church it's yeah, the yeah, backstage, it's backstage with g-dub yeah yeah, yeah it's with the bit. wolf yeah so that they know how long we've been together we've been what together for a long time it's been 20 plus years easy I mean, oh yeah because this is 2020 that would have i don't know yeah it's been it's been more than that because i've known justin at you, least you, 20 years people got to understand too is that it would not we're not just friends as you know you kind of grew up with someone dude we spent day after day after day we worked together in the ministry we've been yeah but I mean, we've been through a lot of so i mean in all honesty you could we could be brothers from another mother <laughs> I'm just being straight, man. We no. don't have the same blood, but I'm telling you. Well, see, that, so let's go. I wasn't planning on that, but let's go down. So here's right. a whole nother side. So, all right, so OE right. is playing, and that's how I got in the ministry. So through Christian music, that's how I get my job. That's how we start in. And then I move into middle school minister and then high school minister. And then Greg, who's actually, your degree is in religion. Yeah, yeah, my degree. I went to East Texas Baptist University, graduated. So I always told people. Oh, yeah. He had a long bang. He was always edgy, fun, yeah. crazy. I'm but, still that way. But no one really knew that he knew a lot about the scriptures and he had actually studied. He was probably one of the smarter guys in our group as far as biblically and, and theologically. He had all that training. That's just the truth. I'm just, it, no, it's true. I mean, So Daniel Nelson ain't that. Daniel's very smart in music. That's Peepaw. smart in music. Yeah, though. he is. He's he is theory. very smart in music. He's yeah, music no theory. Yeah, right. He's yeah. That was his degree. That was his deal, yeah. So that's in his degree, you know, so even at ETBU, they had different things. So when I got in the position at First Bossier, I said, G-Dub needs to come on and do some work. Yeah. So you became the middle school minister. It's true, I did. And so this is what you got to trip out on for us <laughs> for a sec. The wolf was trying to break it on down for the children. It's true. And when you were breaking it on down, we had some crazy, crazy times, fun. man. We had some fun, fun. Time. and it and it matches because I'm retarded even at 47, <laughs> so it makes sense that I would work. And I'm not saying they're retarded. Don't even want to get their feelings hurt. Right? You just say middle school kids, or you know, they're middle school kids, and that's and so easy we, for yes, me. That that's was. it's way easy. Oh, we had a blast. I Dude, mean, so had, it was silly and crazy. Yeah. But then let's keep it real. All right, let's go with it. Because old. Boss man at the top didn't like Greg. No, because I can't, I'm I can't imagine why. Well, I was, I don't know, I'm, I gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you why. Because here's what I don't like about religion. What I don't like about you know Christian people. I'm working on it, but I don't. Is they only look at the outside, and they don't really take time to get to know who the person is. And if you get take take time to know who the person is, you'll know Greg had a lot to offer and was doing a lot of great things. But if you only saw the the funny or the crazy, you never took the time to know who he was, then you only judge a book by his cover. And I'm only saying that because w- over that, even a short amount of time at that point, I knew who his heart was. He had a great heart. He loved Jesus. And I've told people this a lot of times. He was one of the most evangelistic people I had ever met in my life. So people talk about sharing Jesus. Greg, at, at early Christian life, maybe because oh, of we used was, to go into South Park Mall, St. Vincent Mall. We'd go anywhere and just be, you know, people got to understand back in the day, that's right. how you did. Yeah, you went to, you, know, you, you went evangelize. Yeah, you went and evangelized. Sure. You just walk right up to somebody and be said, like, do you know Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you said it a little better than No, that. I did, man. I was little. I was short and little. Hey, and do scrawny. you know Jesus? Yeah, yeah but I'll he tell was... you something on that, though. That, that's funny. All right. When I was very spiritual, the I worked at the finish line and in St. Vincent Mall. Yeah, he and that's when we were shoes. on the road, and I'd have to do something. You know how it goes. Everybody knows how all You had your are. side hustle. Yeah, I had your side hustle. 
and the and I forgot his name. You think I know it, but I forgot his name. This is how it was. I've been doing this for a while now, and I think I was still at ETBU. And this guy comes in, man, and we're you know we're talking, and I go into my thing, right? And I I start talking to him, talk about the Lord or whatever. This guy starts crying, man. He says, no one talks to me like that except for my grandma. And you got to understand, there's no hope for me. I'll never forget this. So we have this long conversation. He said, you ever need anything from me? You need money. You need whatever. I didn't think anything about it. He's like, you need shoes. You need whatever. You come holla. I was like, all right. So, and he bought all kind of stuff and then left. Dude left and assistant manager pulls me to the side and says, do you know who that is? And I was like, no, I don't know anybody. And he goes, I don't remember the dude's real name. I have to go research it. But he said, that's Bam Bam, the leader of the bottom boys. He goes, that's the leader of the bottom boys. And you just talked to that dude for an hour and 20 minutes about wow. God. And I guarantee you, most people don't even get that time with him, much less even see the dude because he runs the program. And I was like, I was like, I turned white. I was like, holy cow. Because <laughs> I understand back in the day, the bottom boys. It was I mean, bad. Yeah, they were bad. They, they, they didn't play around. They didn't even send cops down there. In the bottoms, they didn't. Not unless they had backups. So, but he was. That's why I tell people like people talk about being evangelistic or being sharing Christ. Greg was really the best example of that. Maybe I appreciate that. that. I know, I no, that, that I, I mean yeah. that's my story. That's the yeah. truth. Yeah, I, appreciate I, that. I didn't know anybody else that really did all that. So, when you go on to the next level, yeah, some bosses didn't fully understand that. They didn't sure. appreciate all that. Sure. So in that uh, transition between. You doing all that and us hiring and then me having to try to explain and defend you, it didn't go so well. No, it did not. It didn't. <laughs> and and when, I think, here's the deal. I know this for a fact. Boss man told me to my face that I would follow Justin before I followed him, and that's why I had a problem. And I knew right then that it was like, yeah, he dude, ain't. it didn't matter what. Man, I cut my hair. I dressed up in suits. Oh, we all tried. I did to all conform. kind. Of, yeah, I mean, I really did because I, I really did think that that was the way to go. Like this was the time to start changing. Oh, Stop yeah. being so silly right. and grow up. You know what I mean? Right. And then, so then, to to go the next level, I call some friends. You call friends, and we had to train transition to another church. Yes, that's right. And that was one in Dallas. That's right. So I got pictures somewhere of. Uh, <laughs> are we boring you over, Scott? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I was looking up uh, the leader of the Bottom Boys. Oh, I don't know okay. that that was I'm necessary sorry. right I got, now. I, got, I went yeah, down a I tangent. Yeah, sorry. you don't need to I get... can find it for you. Just give me a shot tomorrow. I have his name. Okay, got gotcha. Yeah, we probably don't need to go into that, yeah. though, because I don't know sorry, that sorry. it really matters. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. but I That's say. ADD. So when we, <laughs> so when we got you and you had to transition from First Bossier to Dallas, that was a. I I can remember loading up the U-Haul and moving. I cried. Dog. I did too, dog. I cried. That was an emotional time. It really was. It was an emotional time even when I got there. So then, because but little did I. Well, I mean, I don't know how deep we want to go because we only got an hour, bro. So I mean, I don't know. Yeah, but you, that's you know. But that's a once part again, of the, I can. You can go as long as you want because I. Can but break that's it a up. pretty heavy part of the story because yeah, it was heavy. I cried, dude. And me I too. I don't. I don't care what anyone says. So I then did, once once then you were only there how long? Almost three years. Three years. Yeah. Seems shorter than that. It did. It was in almost my three years. Yeah. Wow. And in that time, it didn't end well because oh, those dudes were no, shady. Not at all. Not at all. I, I can't blame them. Now I look back, you know, I, I can't blame them to a degree. But then on the other side, that's where I totally broke from religion. I just. Yeah, and it was because the church. One church didn't believe in you and then back you when we were trying to do that. Sure, the leadership. Sure, sure. So that hurt. Well, the and then it's having that hurt to move, me. and then you're moving to another church in Dallas, and it didn't. No, and the the deal is though, man, is that part of that was my fault. The, well, yeah. some of my fault, some yeah, of it was it. my fault. But the other part was that, you know, for so long because I want to be a musician, do this all the time, I never got tied down to anybody, and there was a reason for that because I knew that once I made a decision to be serious with somebody, be engaged, even though I wanted that. Or, right. or be married, there's that wasn't going to happen. Or if it did, it was going to be rocky. You right. know how it is. You're on the road all the time. You don't make no money. You're just, you know. You wasn't going to get married. Passionate. Yeah, yeah, I just wasn't going to. So when I went and, did, and I was doing this church, I wasn't married. So I was a single guy trying to live a certain way, and that didn't always happen. And it was just a mess. I mean, it just so right. part of that was my fault. Right. You know what I mean? But which is almost, it's not impossible, but Lord, gee, I mean, that's a that's a tough deal. I mean, it really is. That's a whole other subject. But so, I got to Dallas, 
And, and it was the same kind of way. You and know. then they let you go. Yes, they let me go. And uh, that's what sent you off the deep end. Yeah, dude. I just was tired of it, man. I was sick of I was like, man, I mean, in all honesty, I remember driving down the road in my Nissan. Yeah. And I said, God, for the last, I don't know, however long from 1988 till that time. Which would have been. I've done everything right. I mean, I should get awards for some of the crap that, you know what I mean? That's the way I was thinking selfishly. Yeah. It was just selfish. You know, I was in myself and not thinking about the big picture. And uh, I was just like, F off, dog. Yeah. I'm out. I, I don't want nothing to do with this anymore. I hate religion. I hate all this crap. I don't want me. And I did, man. I absolutely just, I jumped off the deep. I just went to the deep end. Matter of fact, so deep, no lie, that my education didn't help much in the time. You know, I mean, I look back now, and I'm glad I went through it. But, the, you know, I remember sitting down. I'd come in town. I think my granddad was had a stroke or something, and my mom asked me to come in town. I came in town. And I don't know if Justin talked to my mom or something, but Justin and I went to eat. Because Justin and I were always tight. It didn't matter uh, where I was. You know, Justin, Daniel, uh, there's a few people that kind of stayed there no matter what, you know. And Justin took me to eat one day. And I remember, I remember this now. You got me thinking. And I remember sitting in front of Justin, we're talking. I was like, dude, there is no God. There, I mean, I'm not, I'm not down with it. You can say whatever you want. I love you, bro, but you ain't going to convince me of nothing. I mean, I was really angry and really gone. I think that was Posadas. Could have been. <laughs> I think it was Their Posadas over there on Mansfield. Good, dude. But the reason I say that, I can remember that too. And people would ask me, like, man, what's up with Greg? Was, I'm like, man, you know, he's just working through stuff. I'm like, no, I heard he's crazy. I heard he's – and I'm like, whatever, man. You know, it's like I knew you were going through stuff. I knew why. Oh, I was straight crazy. There ain't no doubt. Well, but right. but but I understood why you were crazy. I think that's the thing that if you know somebody, you kind of know what happened. I can't say I would have been no different. So it's like that's where I was like, man, I ain't got nobody to judge. Nobody's treated them that way. And if they had well, been treated that way, I think the time, way, the, my maturity wasn't where it needed to be. Sure, you know what I mean. So I think that. With the religion, I was so burnt by religion. And people know what that is. Yeah. You know, that the next time I went to work with, for this place, and it was, again, it was straight religion. It wasn't anything I did. It was yeah. straight religion. It was dirty. I mean, it was straight dirty in the back. And I was like, dude, I can get that going to work for freaking, yeah. you know, Apple. I mean, yeah. get my throat cut. So I was like, whatever, I'm out. Bam. Then you went, so that was bad. He went dark. You became straight a bouncer. Dark. Yeah, that's true, dude. Isn't that crazy? I'm the <laughs> he's a bouncer. This is what's at a so club. crazy about that. Let me tell you though, this is what's this weird. This is why we're breaking it down. This, this is, is for the, everybody. This is backstage. Yeah, this is for everybody though. I want to tell you this. No matter what, I went off the deep end. I was straight crazy, hookers and hoes. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> <laughs> hookers and hoes. Okay. It was straight up. I'm being real, man. Yeah. I'm just being straight real. And. God was looking out after me anyway. And I'm telling you, I was doing some crazy stuff. But he still, even in all that, I remember not having a job. I didn't have anything, bro. And I was like, man, I'm going to have to do it. I, I'm, I mean, I'm going to have to do some crazy stuff in order to make rent. You know? I'm not lying. I don't know if y'all want me to say it. <laughs> but, but. Okay, I think we read between the lines. <laughs> wow. I was about to do some crazy stuff because, man, I couldn't, man. I mean, my parents don't make a bunch of money. I can't. I mean, I'm a grown ass. Excuse me. I'm yeah. a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. You're sorry. a grown sorry. man. Sorry. I'm yeah. a grown man. Straight grown man. And uh, I'm getting gas. And it's like my last bit of gas money, man. And I'm at this gas station. And I find this credit card that's by the uh, pumps. And remember, back then, there was no cell phone. No. There was nothing like that, you know. So, or there were cell phones, but they were just coming out, you know. Anyway, so <clears throat> I pick up the card and finish getting gas, and I go to my friend's house because we're eating lunch. And remember, we're poor, so it's like ramen noodles and mm -hmm. hot dog or something, you know. And I use his phone because I can't afford a phone. So I use his phone and call this number. I say, hey, I got this credit card. I found the gas station, yada, yada, yada. She's like, all right, I'll get the owner in touch with you. And so I gave him that guy's number. No lie. Like 20 minutes later, this cat calls. He says, hey, I forgot his I know his name was David, but I don't remember his last name. He's like, hey, this is David such and such. You have my credit card. And I was like, yeah, I got it. He goes, hey, I need to get that card back. I've been looking for it everywhere. Would you meet me? And I forget. Oh, it was called uh, Sway down in Lower Greenville in Dallas. I was like, sure, I'll meet you down there. And I was like, but you may have to pay for my gas. And he was like, just come down. I was like, all right. 
So I go down there, no doubt, right? So I show up, I meet this guy, he shakes my hand, and immediately when I walk in, and let me back up a little bit. I've been looking for work, and I actually work for 24-hour fitness a little bit. Not a lot of money in that unless you're selling a right. So, And there's no days off. You just work, right, because you're just selling. So anyway, I walk in, and uh, this guy shakes my hand and goes, I'm David so-and-so. I own these restaurants. This is my new club. I'm opening up, but it's a restaurant as well. He goes, can I get my credit card? So I gave it to him, and he goes, did you put anything on it? I was like, no. Nah. And then so he starts asking me some questions that I don't remember what they were, but he knew the answer to them, and I was straight up. And he said, dude, I want you to work for me. He goes, matter of fact, I'll pay you whatever you need to live so that you can work for me because I can't even keep people that are like you or not even near you. I mean, most of my staff, they suck. That's exactly what yeah, he said. Yeah, they was probably stealing from And he said, they're stealing. He goes, so he goes, I got a guy I'm firing right now. I'm going to put you in his spot. And he goes, I want you to run the door, and then I want you to help out when – you know, with bouncing or things. And I was like, look, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of soft. I don't know nothing about no throwing no hands, but I'll help you out. And he was like, uh, no problem. But whatever you make at the door, you keep, and then I'll pay you this. Dude. You started banking. Man, I'm going to tell you right now. I was straight. There was one time I made $2,000 in two days. That's what I'm talking about. Are they still hiring? No. <laughs> <laughs> We were getting, Scott. I was getting paid, man. We were, I, but I'm just telling you in that, I know that, dude, God was working. I'm telling you he was. It just, those, there's just things, if there were more things than that, but there were little things in that. And I wouldn't think about God at the time. I was just like, you know, it's just lucky. Right. I got lucky. It is what it is. And, you know, uh, you know, that's, I, I can look back now and go, ah, I see where that was going. Cause I needed to mature, man. I needed to get mature. Right. Not that that was the way to be mature. Right. But that's just what I chose. All right. So hold on. So we're going to pause right there and then we're going to switch gears because in your family, your grandfather. Yes. Was in the Shreveport police department. Yes. And one of the early guys in the Shreveport. Yeah. Police so was his dad. So you had a history of policing in your family. That's right. And I, and, and also you'd military. always kind of military. Yeah, police and you've always kind of wanted that, talked yeah, about that. Yeah, they talk about that, yeah. So when he went down that road, I remember at one point in our reconnecting before he'd moved back here, before it was going on, he's like, man, I think I might be a police officer. And I remember going, what? You know, right, right, <laughs> like right. then I heard. I'm soft. I yeah, mean, but, I'm soft. But then know? I heard all the stories of like, well, I didn't realize his grandfather and his great-grandfather. So then that's when I remember is because – did you almost work in Dallas in the police department? Yeah, I tried. Man, I put in everywhere. I almost did. I almost went to Mesquite. That's what I'm. If that's yeah. what I couldn't remember. And then that's a back. That's how you got back here in one way, wasn't it? Right. Because- and so let me say this before we get going on this. Anything I say does not reflect any job that I'm in right now. Yeah. All right. So I can't really say. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that how you, you, but how you transition back to Shreveport. Yes, that's correct. So, because if you go, well, if you're in Dallas, how do you get back home? It's because you got hired. That's right. Doing something that your family had always wanted to do. Yeah, that's true. And if you knew Greg, the last job you think he's going to do is be a police officer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a blast. (laughs) But, but, and when you came back, he was also still away from God, even though, because I went to your academy that when you were graduating from the academy and all that stuff. And I remember going, my boy. Is graduating the police academy. <laughs> and there's some stuff in there because you, you got to understand, too, is doing that. I knew that I was uh, – I didn't really grow up fighting. I got jumped on a bunch, but I was never a fighter. Right. So I knew that I had to get to a point to where uh, I was tougher than what I was at the time. And so that was my mission in order to do that. And you know, and you graduated in your class. I was graduated top of my class. Say something. So, oh, I, I that's remember. class 51 class 5 1 fools uh, <laughs> don't y'all forget it we earned well, every piece of that so all i'm saying is like when you see and you and we start going into just how that happened it's a right. pretty wild crazy right. story so then you're back yes simple chart what how long what what year was 51 what year was your what year was that i, I say i started the street in 2004 so, so Simple Church was still three years away from launching because yeah, we didn't launch yeah. until And I was married to someone else at the time. Right. She was crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, so well, she had an alcohol problem. Oh, yeah. So, dude, I mean, that's just keeping crazy, it straight. Yeah. I'm just being real. I mean, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I remember I ran into you when I worked at LSU and you were in the lobby because y'all had brought somebody in. Mm-hmm. 
and you were skinny, and for some reason then you seem much taller than you are now. Maybe I got taller. I don't know. I'm strong, son. But <laughs> I just remember how angry you looked. Yes. You looked it's very true. angry. It was 2000. It was probably 2005. Yeah, and the truth is at the time, though, part of that was also uh, – I was also – amateur fighting in the time so i'd been doing uh muay thai and i'd been doing uh brazilian jiu-jitsu and i was he was going fight son yeah I I was, that's, I what, I that's, that's what i did that's what i did yeah and it's what's, true. We, what's weird that's is because i was but, cutting weight for a, yeah uh, a fight I but what's fight weird is is to think wow. about like the you're saying angry tough fighting guy that ain't who we saw him <laughs> yeah no. i mean it yeah. was like he you were yeah. so now i'm like but it didn't shock me. I mean, we're still friends. You're still no, doing yeah, whatever. He yeah, was yeah. just working through what's going on. Oh, so I was then, very angry. So, I'm very, very – I was very angry. Yeah. So then when you fast forward to 2007, what what year did you come back and start helping with Simple Church? I don't know. All I know is is that I remember us talking. I don't know why we talked. I really don't know why. But you said, hey, man, I need you to come play the bass because I need more bass players. I, need, right. I know what you bring. And I was like, man, I'll do it for you, but I ain't about no God business. But now, I'll do it. For now this you. is what people don't know, and they don't they don't really get. This no. is why you backstay. He was like, man, it wasn't like, oh, we're all friends, and man, I just want to come in and praise the Lord with you. He's yeah. like, no, bro. He's like, Soul fifty two. <laughs> he was like, bro, I'll do it because we boys. But no, I ain't down with all that. I wasn't. I wasn't down with it at all. Wow. I mean, it wasn't even my first wife. Was like, what are you doing? I was like. He's my friend, been my friend. He's my brother. Because she him didn't out. even know anything about your. Well, she was atheist straight yeah. out. She didn't care. I mean, it was just straight yeah. out. So you think about that. He was just like, but he was going, that's brotherhood. That's I just why did, you... man. I was like, dude, I am loyal. And it wouldn't have mattered if it was Daniel or Alan or Justin. Man, I'd do anything for them, dude. So then we matter. like, he going to do it. Yeah. So then when in the process of being back at the church or playing again, did you feel like you began to soften your heart or let God speak to you I again. think there were a few times but man I don't think it was really for real and I mean like really really for real it's about two years after I got shot yeah yeah so what year so this is a whole nother we did a story on it we yeah. need to put it back on YouTube because there's a whole message that they can watch that yeah. whole story which I thought we did you pretty... could do a message for two hours on that joker. yeah yeah so uh what's for, for everybody understand he's a police officer I was on his call list. Yes. That's so right. the call list is if you get shot, you get a phone call. Yeah. Some people do it. Some people don't. I always did because I know how the process works. And I just thought, you know, if my wife, found, my wife's going to know straight out. And she's going to have someone to, yeah, she's got to have someone to lean on, no right. doubt. And so to me, and my, just to me, someone who's like family that I can really, really trust, besides my mom, yeah. you know, and my dad, who would not be like broken up, would be. Hagler, Justin Hagler. I mean, this is, <laughs> he I mean, wanted this to is, get in there. <laughs> he has to, and that was my, always my deal. And I, you know, I remember telling Justin, "Hey, man," and I remember Justin going, "Man, you ain't going, ain't nothing going to happen to you, yada." And I was like, "I'm with you, but just in case it goes down, right. I want you to have that. You know, I want you to know that straight out." So I'm at my house chilling one night, at ten thirty ish, eleven. I can't remember ten, somewhere around there. Yeah. And I don't ever really answer my phone very much at night, but for that reason. I was putting my phone up and it rang and I picked it up and it said, G does been shot. He's on his way to LSU and hung up. I'm like, Angie looked at me cause my face obviously sure, reflected yeah, yeah. whatever that emotion yeah. was. And she was like, what, what was that? And I was like, man, the wolf shot, I'm gone. <laughs> and this is funny. I was in my old Ian's truck, that gold truck. Yeah, that now, gold. That gold. Yeah, you had that son. forever. Yeah, yeah. So I get in that truck and I get on, I'm leaving Stockwell's where we live and I get on I 20 right there. Never happened before. I mean, me owning that truck in twenty years. I'm so wide open, like wide open, that the hood unlatches. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever told you this story. I don't that know. mug said, "Shabak!" So, oh, <laughs> and man. I was like, Burr. I started slowing down. Like, My bad, God. <laughs> it literally barely hung on. Somehow the wind got underneath it. And the wind was going so fast that the latch was loose, and it almost threw my hood over my the windshield. Man, I remember that. So that happened I, to me in high school. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, "No, nah, all right, God, I'm gonna slow it down anyway." But then when I got there, you know, it's weird when you when somebody shot, they don't tell you, they no. don't tell you where it, what, they don't say. Well, he's, at the time though, too though, man, at the time I was working in a certain division that we did undercover work. Yeah, we went after super bad guys. We were always working. It was just one of them deals where. 
no one knew. Whereas, you know, if you're on patrol and that goes down, right. you're going to kind of know what's up. Right. But the division wasn't like that. Division was like, keep it quiet. Don't say anything. This is what's up. Just who needs to know needs to know and go. It, the only thing you'll ever – it was in the Times and a small little article like in the back. Right. I have it cut out. But no one knew. So when no I got knew. there – I ended up going to LSU because anybody shot in trauma or something going to go to LSU. So I go to LSU and I'm walking in there. And one guy recognized me and he's like, this way. And what I got nervous on, so I'm going back there. And they all were masked up. They were on that part of the division. You you never knew who anybody was. or I right. mean, now we did when they were off, but like yeah, the, yeah. the community don't know. So it's super secretive. <laughs> so I'm walking back there or whatever. And I remember that guy got to – a point, and he goes, man, I, I, I ain't going no further. <laughs> so then, then my heart dropped, thinking, dude, that dude's bleeding out in the back. Oh, that dude's dead. Yeah, yeah. like you know, yeah. like in my mind, it's like, oh, this ain't good. If he ain't going back, but I don't know if he was nervous. I don't know if he didn't feel good about it. So then I walked that last little bit, and I, I'll never get pushing open the doors to go into the the room, the emergency room that Greg's in. <laughs> he's sitting on the bed. You know, he's tatted up everywhere. So his shirt's off or whatever. He's you know he's all ripped up. He's sitting there and he look. He goes, "Dog, God save me, dog." <laughs> hey man, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm just keeping it straight. God save me, dog. And I, do you remember that? Yeah, dude. Yeah, and I was I going, "Where that, are you man. shot?" Because he's talking to me like. And he goes, "And that whole story is still crazy. It's wild, bro. But it hit his clavicle, but didn't penetrate him. Went through his it part of his vest. vest. It did hit the vest." Yeah. But and at the time, the it was an unusual place to hit the vest yes, because all it's of unusual. them were yeah, yeah. tripping on. If it had been an inch higher or inch, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. And it could have been fatal. It could have been. But it happened to be that it was exactly yeah. the way it was. And so yeah. I pulled the bullet out of the vest with this sergeant. With a lieutenant. Steve, lieutenant lieutenant. Town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, he goes, come over here. And then so we pull it out. He goes, there's evidence. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> we tripping now because yeah. now we got evidence. and But. I can go through that whole story, but we'll put that on YouTube because yeah, right, we right. need to find that story. But I'm going to fast forward to because yeah, Because he shot through the wall, didn't he? Yeah, we'll get through all that stuff, yeah. man. I mean, we can Sorry. do that another time. Yeah, he, he, you know, I mean, all, it, no it, worries. He, he was, yeah. So in that story, that's all told. We can put that. We need to go find that and make sure it's up on YouTube if somebody wants to watch it. But I only say that because I could fast forward again back to the sentencing of the man that shot him and Greg going in and them trying to work through all that. Yeah. You know, when you start thinking about it, that's what people don't think about is your heart, their heart, trying to help people and navigate that, but then someone attempts to kill you, you know? And, I mean, there's so much emotion and so much in all of that. Yeah, dude. And then when you start talking about your wife coming to know the Lord as a result of that, so we're going to go to that because that's a really good part of it. And because we were talking about that's kind of when you started going, all right, I, I'm getting straight on this. And and you have no one knows this. I mean, Justin knows this, but the truth is, even in that time, right after that time, we had a sergeant in our division that was accused of stealing a bunch of stuff out of the property room. Well, because of that and the nature of our division, uh, there were a few that were accused of helping him because they, there, uh, there's no, fa- I can't prove this, but I know that, uh, I know how things sort of work to a degree and because I was still friends with this guy and I wouldn't break that friendship that even I was accused and man, uh, for so forth, you get shot and then you're, you're accused of doing this stuff that threatened to put you in jail. And you're talking about fed Tom that, and you haven't done anything, but you can't convince anybody that you haven't done anything. And the people you thought were your friends are not your friends. And it's, it's all weird. So you're talking about like a two year span of some, it was tough. Just, it was a tough deal. And I remember going to Justin's house going, dude, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I, and I really, you know, I, I haven't done anything. I mean, right. I, don't, I don't know what to say, but I'm not going to stop talking to this guy because, you know, he might've done something, but because he's in a place, what kind of friend am I if I'm, just like, man, I just can't holler at you no more. Yeah. I just not like that, dude. That, anyway, that was a long two years. So in that, all of that tension and all of that up and down, Je- Jesse comes to the Lord. Oh, the yeah, dude, straight up, dude. Yeah, yeah. So tell them a little bit on that story. Then we'll, I don't even know where we're at on time, but we can always adjust. I can but, always. So tell up. me, so give them the story on Jesse. Yeah, then. so, but man, we're, uh, uh, there's a lot of trauma in any of that stuff, right? Which, you know, we'll have to talk about that another time. But uh, as I'm going 
through this trauma, uh, Jessica, no lie. I'm, and, and, and you got to understand, uh, I'm, I'm Justin and Alan and Dan, or even you, Scott may have remembered me in the time, the way I was. Right. So that dude's like way gone. So, and where I was at at the time, there's nothing spiritual per se about me. I mean, I would go to church because I was helping my boy out, but hey, there's just not that thing of, about me that, you know, right. And, uh, and I'm still angry. I have a huge ego attitude and all that mess. Anyway, Jessica looks at me, and it, it may have been about seven days after. And in all honesty, dude, uh, the surrealness had left. You know, I'm still dealing with stuff, but I'm not down about it. I'm not. I'm kind of like, let's go to work. Do what we got to do. I'm cool. And I remember one night her just looking at me and go, I don't understand how you're so at peace. And I said, girl. I'm going to be straight with you. You're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. But I'm telling you, this is why. Deep in my heart, I am at peace. Because a long time ago, I made a decision mm -hmm. to ask Christ to come in my heart. And for whatever reason, at this time, I feel like no matter what would have happened, I'd have been at peace. And I am. I'm fine. I'm good with it. And we need to move on. And, dude, I remember her breaking down. Like, I just can't move on. Because people don't understand. When you go through something like that, your spouse goes through it triple times of what uh -huh. you're going through. And I don't care if he's a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. You know, because there's no control there. Yep. And you and uh, mortality makes you think about crap. It just mm -hmm. does, man. It's the way life is. And so uh, she just said, look, I, I want that peace. I mean, I just, how do you have that peace? I was like, I'm just telling you what I did. And I said, but. I'm not a spiritual man, though, babe. I, I'm just being straight with you. And she's like, well, look, I just, I said, well, look, this is what we'll do. We'll do what I did back in 1988. And she did. She asked Christ to come in her heart right there. <laughs> Which is. It's crazy. And then I it remember, bapt I mean, the baptism, well, all look, of that. Look, here's what's crazy. That's At first, I thought it was, an, in all honesty, man, I thought it was an emotional deal. Because, man, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on then. So I just thought, man, man. And plus, remember, I'm angry. And, I'm like, man, it was just one of them things. She's just trying to work through it. Sometime after, it was before she got baptized. We're sitting at the, in the front row. And I, I don't think I was even playing much music then right. at the Simple Church. Uh, but uh, we're sitting at, we had just moved to the convention center. We're sitting in the front row, and Justin plays. I'll never forget this. Justin plays. It's from, uh, we, we messed with them up in Atlanta. What were their names? They were jerks. I Third day. Name. Was that? Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. In the music, there's this video of Jesus being crucified, and they put him in the ground, and that he raises from this. It's all this dramatic deal. And Jessica, with all the tears in her eyes, says, I get it. I understand. And I knew right then, dude, she wasn't playing. <laughs> She's like, I understand. I really do understand now, and I see what you're saying. And that's yeah. what's up. And that was crazy, man. That so the crazy. reason I say all that is, you know, people, this is what the podcast is to me. You go through all that and you, you kind of tell these stories, but people are in their journeys and they're trying to figure that out too. So if you got somebody who's tripping, you can't give up on them. If you've got somebody going through a hard time, God's still at work. It's true. You know, and, like, and it and it's hard to see all that till you can look back. You can't see it when you're in it all the time. No. But then by faith and by commitment and by loyalty and by friendship, you're going to do, no, I'm with you, dog. It doesn't matter what. What you say, it don't matter if it's a divorce, it don't matter if you're tripping, it don't matter if you're cussing God, because you cuss God out quite a few oh, times. Oh, yeah, And what, dude, what I, I think mean, is, what's yeah. crazy about that is some, I'll tell you right now, brother, that's just, dude, you don't even know God. You don't. Because the I scripture is full of people frustrated and cussing God. Disciples. And going, going David, man, Yeah, Solomon, like, uh, yeah, and they're going, man, so all of that, that all of that, that God's big enough and gracious enough and kind enough to be patient with us and love us and pursue so us. patient. And pursue us that That's he's right, allowed. He does pursue it. And so then you go back and go, wow, look at what God's done. Because now look what a blessing he is to be able to lead and to help and to add in. I mean, and then not to mention, we ain't even got into like Jesse and the whole no, we first chance. And all. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so there's so many good things that come out of it when you don't always see it when you're up in the middle of it. Yeah. But you it's cool. It. No, it but it's it. cool to be able to yeah. look back and go. Yeah. There it is. And I have to throw out First Chance is our nonprofit, right. which we go in and train first responders and also civilians on how to use tourniquets and quick clot in the case of any type of traumatic event. We usually use active shooter, but it could be anything in which, like, 
today's perfect for it. You know, rots, crap like that, getting hurt. And we don't get – we make no money off of it. We have a surgeon that works with us, and he teaches uh, – or I'm sorry, not surgeon, emergency room doctor. That right. He does all the training and all, you know. And that really – she really got more passionate. She was probably passionate. But when you got shot – and everything else, being a police officer yeah. herself, because they're both police officers, yeah. to be able to go, man, we need training, and and y'all yeah, oh, train bad. the staff. Oh yeah, bad training. We didn't have any of that stuff, you right? Know? So no then, one, yeah. So then it's like putting that into officers, and y'all probably seen on the news. I mean, there's, sure, there's, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah, it is know? a big deal. And then y'all really donated big. even to the training of the officers through First Chance. That's right. My wife is. That's man, what's she's got up. a big heart, dude. She's so the reason I'm heart. saying that is. We got all the way around because now we're going to go just a minute into being a police officer today is not easy. And so I put your picture up. Right. And people don't understand that. But when they when when somebody says defund or someone says I'm not – I know it ain't perfect. You know it sure. ain't perfect. We all know it ain't perfect. Ain't none, but it's stupid and irresponsible when I know what you do and how you're willing to risk your life and your friends. Yeah, yeah. So I've write, written out with them. I see what's going on in the circumstance situation. So to me, it's like, no, my my personal stance and then what the church is trying to do is don't just say you support the police, but back it with your action. Yeah, and we appreciate that. And so it's like it's one thing to go, dude, I got you, man. You know I'm praying for you. Dude, prayer's appreciated. Don't get me wrong. That's right, cool. Right. But when you go, man, let me help find a way to train if there's some way to make that better right. let me come out and right. serve some hamburgers or like this you know coming this week where we're going to go honk applause for the graveyard shift oh, dig we that. ain't done enough of it and yeah. so we got to go how can we do more real stuff that encourages or reminds sure particularly at a time when people are so well here's the, well crazy. here's the deal though man i mean it's all complicated but but when you're talking about defund the police if you look what people are trying what they're really trying to say is in the beginning it's all anger mm -hmm. what they're really trying to say is that we need to reform some things and they're right there's no doubt there's got to be reformation when and all of that however you're talking about a million sworn police officers out of that million one or two mm -hmm. are gonna mess up they're just going to here's the other part we're in america and, as, and I'm just saying this the way it is because there's three fingers pointing back at me and everybody listening, we're all the same. We're spoiled. And the truth is, is that we don't like authority and we don't like anyone telling us what to do. So we do need reformation. But no matter how much reformation you put on there, there will always be this tug and pull about mm -hmm. authority, if that oh, makes yeah. any sense. No, I get it. You know, you can scratch race out of that. You can scratch uh, what you think out of that, that is the truth. Yeah. I've been on both sides, and there's no doubt what happened up in Minnesota is murder, straight out. And I don't know a cop worth his salt, especially the guys that I've worked with or worked with to this day that would not say the same right. thing. Right, exactly. No doubt. And that's why – the reason I say that is, is as we're navigating this, I know y'all's heart, like even Ben, all of I, – I know what you're trying to do. So to me, all we should be doing as a community or as individuals is going, dude. We're not. We didn't take the oath. I it's didn't true. get. I didn't put the badge on. It's true. So it's like, what? What do I got to say? So all I'm saying is, no, dude. Thanks for putting the badge on. Thanks for taking the oath. What can I do to support? To help encourage? To help train? To help do whatever I can to make the community well, better. Check this out, too. I'm glad you brought it up because uh, it made me think about today. This is what's crazy. Okay, so you got the media model, and then you got real life. So today uh, I had to go pick up some uh, medicine for my wife. So I'm in my uniform, and uh, I went and go in and pick it up. And I run into this lady, and she works at the store I was at. And uh, I said, we kind of just, you know how you catch the eye of somebody right. and I was like, hey, and if you know me, I'll talk to anybody, but I'm goofy, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm silly. I yeah, just, we do know. Yeah, I'm just like, whatever. Just I don't, a little bit. I really don't care. So I'm like, what up? And so I'm just kind of going by, and she goes, what up? And I said, I hope today's good. She goes, baby, man, it is great. It can't get no better. And I said, girl, that made my day because I ain't heard that and. Two weeks right. from nobody. 
And she did. She goes, wait a second. Don't go nowhere. She goes, what do you mean you ain't heard that? I said, I'm telling you right now, I ain't heard that. And that made my dad just want to tell you. So we get to talking. Her name is Mocha. And we start talking about stuff. Just talking. Just getting to know one right. another. She got underwear in her hand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> trying to put up the underwear. i am just got the basket. You know, I'm just right. trying to get in and out. And uh, we start talking deep. She talks about how, as a single mom, she believes she raised her kid right. Uh, she got a couple children. They went through college. They made something it's of awesome. themselves. She was talking about – anytime someone sees the uniform, they talk to you, it's funny because they talk about what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. And you don't necessarily want to talk about what's going on, <laughs> but you just kind of like – Marvin Gaye did, you. though. What's going on? Yeah. Anyway. So, anyway, uh, at the end of it, she says, I just want to tell you this. She said, uh, as, an, as an African-American woman – Thank you for what you do. That's now, big, look, man. this it didn't stop there. And I was like, look, here's the deal. And I really believe this. I truly believe. I don't care what anyone says. I told her this. I said, listen to me. Ain't no reason for you to say African-American. We people. It don't matter what color you are. Mm-hmm. Black man, white man, Mexican. That ain't it. We're people. And until we start think, talking like we're people, things don't change. And she goes, I agree with you, but I need you to understand that where I'm coming from, I don't hear that. And I'm telling you, thank you. Because without you, I wouldn't be able to raise my kids the way I've raised That's them. That's right. So then I leave from there. I'm not lying. I'm trying to get out. Another dude comes up. Not lying, man. I'm not lying. Because I'm going to go, hey, man. And, you, you know, I'm in a uniform. I'm, you know, you're at alert. You're always looking right. around. You don't know when you're going to get bushwhacked or some crazy right. stuff's going Or somebody runs up and says, they shoplifting, they shoplifting. And you got to go do all that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't. You don't, you, you don't want to go in a store in your uniform, right? right? So, uh, not that I wouldn't be glad to help, but it's just one of the things. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to understand. Anyway, other guy comes up and goes, I just want to tell you, my man. He said, thanks for what you do. Thank you. And don't let nobody put you down. I said, you are welcome. And I move on. No lie. Old lady comes up. Hey, baby. I just want you to know. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. I get in line. I got five thank yous today. That's big. And so what I'm saying That's is. That's awesome. My, my point is, though, and this ain't, that ain't the only thing. I could go on and on, but I'm, I'll take a bunch of time. The media got what they pushing. And, again, I'm not in Oregon or right. Portland or anything like that. But so far, everywhere I go. That's all I'm getting. That's good. And I'm and that opens up dialogue to be able to talk. That's and right. that's what has to happen, man. We gotta talk. We gotta open up and be straight. Even if we don't agree with one another. Yep. It's okay to not agree. We you know, we're there's there's two sides of the coin, no doubt, man. And you there's no way to understand this job unless you've been in it. Just like there's no way to understand the way certain uh uh situations are or groups of people or anybody feels unless you walked in those shoes so the only way you're going to know is open up and talk yep. but there's still that pool with authority mm-hmm. you see what i'm saying it's way more complicated than saying we got to defund defund right they don't really mean that it's really more of hey dude we got to reform some stuff something's yep. got to change and that's yeah. why i say this is important and why i wanted you to do the podcast obviously long-term friend so when somebody's telling me something, I'm listening more to you and your friends or the people that are doing it and trying to put them in my life and go ride when I get the invite. Sure. Because that's what I try to tell people. It's like, and you would tell me, it's like, man, you don't know till you get out there. And that's the truth. And so the problem is, is they're not out there. No. So they only know what they know or they watch what they watch and they say what they say. And well, until everybody you watches get, live PD right. and that's just atrocious. <laughs> Are you I mean, glad they took it off there? Golly, I, uh, <laughs> man, I just can't watch cop shows. Or right? Like that. Well, they took them all. You ain't got. Yeah, to I, I like to. I like to laugh all the time, so I'm right. watching silly stuff and stuff. You know. Well, that's but, so. That's it. That's that's the G money right there. Yeah. So that's just that's just podcast one. Yes. So we may come back and do some more. Yes. But thanks yeah. For, thanks for doing what you do. Make it number six. Man, tonight. I love doing it, and I'm so glad Justin asked me to help lead this deal because uh, it really is part of my heart. Oh, now, dude, ain't no I doubt. love doing it, man. People don't understand. I love doing it. People come up and say, "Man, we love your energy." Well, I want you guys to know this. It's always been that way because it comes from something deep. That's the truth. It comes from something deep, and it's not to necessarily entertain you. Yes, I want you to get something from it because I understand my purpose, which is a whole nother deal. Yeah. I explain that. But 
I want you to get, I want you to know that Christianity or knowing God is not about a bunch of rules. It's about being FR double Edom, baby. Free. <laughs> Like that, you, that's the best that's, part. Oh, and I am man. straight. I'm telling you, I will be free. You ain't going to stop me from jumping and spinning. That's I'll right. hit bad notes. I'm the one that messes up all the time. Anybody tell you I'm the one. But I don't care. Because, because you're trying to be free. I am. So that's, But this is the reason I love him, though, because it's and, – and how about the diversity? And I, I, Just real quick before we get yeah, on. Yeah, go, go. You brought in a lot of different people to Heck play yeah, and sing, and it's been fun. And Daniel did too. Yeah, I know. You did too. Oh, you helped with that. But that's you know? all right. But what I'm saying is, oh, is yeah, that's part of that we've freedom. We've wanted to do that, though. We've wanted to do that, to have that freedom to go, and how hey, cool, man. How cool has it been from them? Like, they're bringing their kids in there. Hey, man, it's awesome, dude. All, these, all these new greasy, friends. Greasy, stanky. <laughs> And all they they bring their kids. I yeah, mean, it's, dude, it's a, they show up. It we, just changes the vibe, man. Yeah, dude, it's great, man. It's awesome. We got yeah. more to come, y'all. I mean, I'm just thankful. Hey, y'all, y'all don't understand. There's more coming. It's it's gonna be. It's awesome, dude. I'm telling you. I'm just thankful. Yeah. I'm just letting you I know. Am too. Brother to brother, I'm thankful, man. I'm thankful too, man. Yeah. And let me tell y'all yeah. this. This is how serious I am about it, though. I ain't played guitar in since Vietnam. <laughs> and when Justin said, "Hey, man." I want you to help do this, and I want you to forget about production and sound, because that's what I was doing for a while to help out, because I wanted to be a part. Right. You know? I want you to focus on the music, get this thing going, do what you do. All right, I want you to play the guitar. Dude, I started taking lessons again. So I'm just letting y'all know I take this serious, you and go. Oh, I'm going to yeah, go with it. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. We make it happen. We're going to have an open eyes reunion on the next podcast. Don't with you. fight it. <laughs> Don't, Don't fight, fight it. it. Don't hey, that was a pretty good song choice. It was. At first, we thought it was going to be cheesy. And you brought it. And, and you said, we did, man. We brought it. And I, P. Paul's not here to talk about it, but he thought it was cheesy, too. He did? And, He's yeah. like, I just don't know if this is I right. just, I said, cheese. And I said, yeah, it's borderline. There ain't no doubt about that. I don't know how we're going to pull that Steve Perry off. But it worked out great, dude. Y'all just great gotta, tune. Y'all just got to trust. It was a great tune. Keep throwing some Here's stuff out. Here's the other out. deal, too, man. I didn't really realize how intricate everything gets with Choosing music, making sure everything flows. Man, man, that's a lot of work, y'all. Y'all don't understand how much work it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, and this shit it is easy. Well, because other thing, the other part of the typical church experience, they play the same songs over yeah, and over again. Yeah, they do. Again. Yeah, it's the same. And thing. I'm not saying that's wrong or bad. No. I'm just saying that it's a little easier if you go, man, I know that song and I've played it four times, five times, 20 times. We tried to keep it fresh where it's different. Sure, we play some songs again, but, sure but it's very rare. Yeah, I mean, when you really look back, there's a lot that's not out there. So sure. we got a lot more of that coming. But yeah, I appreciate dude. your sacrifice, dog. Man, I appreciate you letting Making me be there. Happen. I love doing it. Yep. Thanks for letting me be on this podcast. Anytime. And that's it didn't get crazy yet. We were just getting warm. No, we was just trying to I keep say it. say get crazy. No. It was getting warmed up. All right. We love y'all. We got to get out of here. Better, y'all. Till next time. Peace what out. we say, peace. Peace. Holla at your boy. <laughs> <laughs>